Hi, I'm Nikki Felbert. I'm a filmmaker and continuous seeker of life's truth and natural magic. And here's where I get to share amazing interviews and bindings with you, from people that have followed a calling and have a wealth of knowledge to share. Please subscribe, rate and share the Nixie Pod Show with people you think will enjoy or benefit from it. Tanya Bounds, thank you so much for coming. Um, you do body work and you're a near dance teacher and you do tremor release. Tell us a little bit about why you got into tremor release and all this body work that, you, that you've studied over the years and, and give, give to people. So um, I think I've had a fascination with self-healing and the journey of healing through our own bodies. After all, this is the one that knows me better than anybody else. Uh, for a long, long time, so it started with aromatherapy way back in 1994, trained with Helen Ranger. Um, and from there, of course, the journey just began. From there, it was body, mind, spirit all the way. Went into reflexology, Indian head massage, um, just body stuff, anything to do with the body. And, um, and then in 2003, I think it was, Somebody said to me, you need to go to a near class. So when I was 20, I started dancing. I've always wanted to dance my whole life. I didn't dance as a child. She said, you've got to go to near. And I said, what is near? And she said, I can't tell you, you've just got to go. So I went to the then um, Virgin Active, or was the Health and Racket Club actually. And the teacher said, well, take off your shoes. And she turned the lights off on dim. And I thought, I've never danced without shoes. And I took off my shoes and for the first time in my life I actually felt my feet and that moving with awareness of my feet opened up an entirely different world for me through Nia, through dancing barefoot connected to the earth, um, through sensing the energies of my body rather than trying to figure out how to get the next eight steps into this grey matter. And that's how it all began. So this combination of healing work, body work, touch work, um, that was the beginning of the journey. So I started my near well white belt in 2003, began teaching within months. I had never taught a thing in my whole life. I wow. thought I was going to die, it was so scary. But the love of dance, the love of music, the love of movement, the love of bodies just took me through. Um, and from there I went on to do all my various belt trainings until last year I finally did my black belt training. Wow, so, so why is it a belt? Is it um, connected with a martial art? Yes, so Nia is graded in belts, um, just for, for the simplicity. There are triads in Nia. We have a martial arts triad, so underneath everything we do in movement, there is an energy of Tai Chi, an energy of Taekwondo and Aikido, moving around life. Then there is a triad of the dance arts. So we've got jazz, showing off, being sassy, being cool. There's modern art, which is shapes and shaping your body in various ways. And then there's Duncan dance. Isadora Duncan took off her ballet shoes and said, let's dance free in silks and floating garments. Mm -hmm. And the third triad is the healing art. So we've got yoga, very much postures. We've got energy along bones and alignment. Then we've got um, Feldenkrais, which is all about touch and sensation. And then we've got Alexander Technique, energy out the top of the head, so energy up. And when we put those triads together, we have Nia, but the, the martial arts grading system they took. So we have a white belt, green belt, blue belt, brown belt, black belt, and then degrees, first degree, second degree, and all these different things. Wow, so that's a lot of modalities into one dance. And I actually had the pleasure of doing a Nia class with you this morning, so I have an understanding of, of what it is about. And um, I was it was the first dance class that I've done with my daughter which was amazing mm -hmm. and she, uh, to watch her flow with fluidity with her body and to um, use some of the martial art moves as well which she really enjoyed because it really um, gets the imagination going as well um, it was a really wonderful experience but I also felt like I had moved every part of my body by the time I'd finished mm -hmm. Um, and so that is really, I felt it was really good for, um, for my whole system. I feel a lot more relaxed afterwards and energized at the same mm. time, which is, I guess, a plus on both sides. Um, is, what are the purposes of, of doing it? Or are you just doing it because you love it? Well, the purpose is, in Swahili, Nia means on purpose. Um, so originally Nia meant neuromuscular integrative action. So without needing to think, he would watch me and just copy, which is what he did this morning. 
and it's going straight into the nervous system and working just organically. But I love this whole thing of on purpose because there is a purpose to everything we do. Perhaps you thought you were just pointing your finger, but we're not. We're working with desire. I want, I want, I want, I want. There's an energy behind that. So when we bring a lot of that energy of play and imagination um, and then those different energies, it's so much, if I tell you to just punch something, uh, and, and you might just end up doing that, but if I put an imaginal thing behind it and give it a good pack, like how much of this year have you had enough of? Wow, wow, wow. My body feels the realness of it. And so we get the benefit of being able to release our emotions, our anger or our child spirit. We would did a lot of skipping around the room or our inner ballerina or whatever you want to call it. Like an artist, a body artist. And it's done in a safe environment. The world out there doesn't really allow for too much of this. So it's a, it's a playground for adults. And it's your daughter would have been organic in that she's still young enough to not be shaped by all the rules and conformities yet. Um, but there is a time when you get to my age where it's squeezed you into boxes and Mia gives me the freedom through my body's way. We talk about the body's way where we learn anatomy, physiology, how it moves. We use those nine movement forms to bring the energies of those. We never actually do Tai Chi or jazz. We just bring the energies in and then we have my body's way. And your body's way and my body's way, entirely different. The purpose of Nia is to be in joy. If it doesn't feel like joy, we tweak until we find joy. We're constantly seeking joy and the experience for the body, mind and spirit. And that is why when you say that you leave relaxed yet energized, that's the whole point, is to be able to find my body's way that will make me feel happy. Yeah. And can anyone do this dance? If you ha are completely uncoordinated, could you still do near? They are the best. There's no preconceived ideas. And you may have noticed I had an 80-year-old in the class today and she couldn't do what the others were doing. She's had um, sacrum issues, so she couldn't get to the floor, but she stood against the wall and did things. There was permission to be any age, any stage. I have had a lady who's been stage four cancer. She was actually dancing there with us this morning. She got through it. She danced holding onto the bar, hardly moving her feet. Because never forget, it's about the joy of movement. And if I have cancer and I can only do this, well, that's my joy today. There's music and I can move something in my body. And when the body hears that you're willing to just keep moving, well, it keeps moving. And it keeps seeking joy and it keeps seeking pleasure. And we just keep doing that. What made you go, I really want to try a different way to what I've grown up with? Well, I actually s studied um, languages. I majored in French and psychology as well. So the psychology is a little clue. I was always interested in people. Then went into advertising. My early career was in advertising agencies. I was in client service, studied marketing, did all of that stuff. But throughout and underneath that has always been a desire for two things. The one is for making a difference to the world. So the kind of social work. I was an, a rotor actor for 10 years. Um, always serving the community, always doing that, and a fascination with the body. I couldn't read enough about bodies and what they did. So bodies um, have been part of the trigger and the psychology, the human psyche. That's why I did psychology for three years. I didn't want to be a psychologist. I realized that very quickly. But I always went for kind of body work. Um, I grew up in a family where touch never happened, just for whatever reason. Um, I know the background, won't go there but there was no intimacy and no touch. And I think I craved it. And often what we crave in the world, we seek. So I was always going for massages and touch. And one day after a wonderful aromatherapy massage, I got in the car and decided, that's it. I want to be an aromatherapist. Got home, told my husband, guess what, darling? I'm going to be an aromatherapist. And within six months, I did the, started uh, the massage training. And then I did a year of aromatherapy training. And that's how it kind of happened. I just wanted to do this. And of course, once we start, once we start, when it comes to the other stuff that you mention about uh, sort of spiritual leaders and all kinds, my husband and I have been in that world since we met. It's what drew us together. So we have always been seeking more than this 3D physical experience. So while I'm fascinated by this temple, and I know this temple holds the answer for all, all health, all healing, there's also the wider perspective and the energetic realm, spiritual realm, the heart realm, 
Um, and so it's, it has found me, I have to be honest. It's, a, it's, a, it's just a path. I just stepped out. And, and you actually then went ahead and did it in a very short period of time. And every time you found something new that you are excited about, you've gone and done it. <coughs> and it doesn't stop. So my daughter will tell you I'm a pathological learner. It started from school. I couldn't get enough of books and learning and school and um, studying. So I have never stopped studying. I have a pile of certificates at home. None of them are on the wall. They're all in the cupboard. But um, I have a load of them. So I have done a lot of studying. Um, I love studying. So my mental realm is stimulated as well. But it is more the intuitive, energetic, um, you know, I've even studied psychic development to give and share and connect to humanity. For me, this is why we're here. Human to human, one human family, one connection. And the work finds me and the courses find me. So when it came to the TRE, that just landed. Oof, I didn't look for it. It just landed. I wasn't looking to do another modality. Um, yeah. So did you try it out and you went, oh my gosh, I need to know more about this? No, nope. I signed up for the course. <laughs> I received an email about this man coming to South Africa to train TRE, which is trauma releasing exercises. Um, he was coming in January. I needed something to fill my tank, so I decided to do it for myself. Four days in Erinvale with David Vaselli, seeing 65 bodies arrive and 65 bodies leave, seeing the unbelievable difference after four days of shaking four, three, four times a day, seeing the change in myself. I said, now I have to do the training. So I signed up for 18 months of training and that's how it goes. I, I was a TRE virgin when I arrived. I knew nothing, just like with Mia. I was called to it <coughs> and the rest is history. Tell me a little bit more about the tre tremor release. Mm. Why is that? So the body is tremoring like this. And um, why are we doing that? What happens? So our nervous system, the ho every day is impacted. And there are things going on. Little things, like I couldn't find you today, where are we going to film? And the body has to react with two ways, fight or flight. And that doesn't mean I'm going to punch someone lights in or I'm going to run into a corner crying. It can mean that. But what it means is that my, my body is going to, my nervous system is going to go towards something or withdraw from something. If this something is really, really big, I just shut down, freeze response. So what we do with the TREs, we actually allow the body to take that charge that's been locked in, and it can be very small, and shake it out. Now in a near class today, we did this. This is Shami. It's coming from my conscious choice. Some people can do it, some people really battle to do it. But when I tremor, it's going directly to the muscles from the nerves. So again, tying in with neurogenic, um, or with Mia being neuro, neuromuscular, there is a sense of when you hike up a mountain or you get off a bicycle after the Argus, it does this, okay? A very different sensation. Yes, you don't have control you over it. You could control. probably stop it if you really wanted to, but it's just naturally. Yeah. Shaking. So, you know, why is this so beneficial? We have been taught as a society to just lock it in and then to just get on with it. And the dangerous thing happens is that these charges build. So with multiple experiences of tension, like not finding the house, right through to experiences of high-end trauma that take our nervous system right up the bar graph, when we don't release, we start to act out from wherever we have gone on the nervous system. And you will probably know people where if I dropped a glass on the floor now, they would, <gasps> <gasps> we've got to clean it up. Where's the broom? Where's the broom? Running around like lunatics. Other person, something happens and they just start crying because uh, oh, I just broke my favorite glass. But it all around, not a kind of grounded response, a bit over the top. Mm coming from adrenaline, coming from cortisol, coming from too many of the wrong hormones running the show. And so the body holds the charge. Now, when we get the body to shake, how do we do it? We open the legs up, lying on the floor, open the psoas. The iliopsoas is the only muscle group that connects lower body to upper body. So when I'm going to flight, I need to fold away emotionally. It's too much. I can't handle the shouting of my parents anymore inside. If I need to, <coughs> It's going to get me out of this chair if I need to act and do things all the time, responding to stimulus all the time. And if I need to freeze, it's going to lock here and here, and I'm going to... <coughs> so we start the shake in the pelvis, in the iliopsoas area, and this informs the muscles start to shake. They're not doing it. It's being done to them. It informs the fascia, the connective tissue. 
And why is that so important? Because the connective tissue is the inner wetsuit that holds the story. Holds the inner story of all the tension we've experienced throughout so our lives. The, the, those tissues are holding the, the body together? Well, it's holding, it's everything that connects. So I, I describe it as um, like glad wrap, like cling film wrap. It's creating the inner tension pattern. So when I have to withdraw from things emotionally or physically, something's going to pull in here and that's going to affect the lines. They so are it's almost lines. locking the tension in the cells. It's it's, it's everything. It's not just cells. It's everything in our okay. body. Everything is connected to everything. So yes. Tom Myers talks about fascial trains, trains like connective lines. If you have hurt your knee, I promise you at some point you're going to get something going on in your hip. And at some point you're going to start feeling it in your shoulder. It's going to affect the lines. Maybe from there you might feel it in this hip. These are cross lines. Yes. So the fascia so could come from the right knee to the left hip. Exactly. And right. it can go cross lines. We have the back lines, the front lines. And these are not real lines, but they're connective lines. And they have discovered that as we cut, maybe with cesareans, you know, we just cut across all these connective lines, it has an effect on the body. Because mm. when we were children, we sang those songs, you know, your knee bone's connected to your thigh bone. Mm -hmm. Bones are connective tissue. Soft stuff is connective tissue. Everything's connected. Yes. And when we start this shake, it's affecting the shape of the inner tension patterns. And it's sending a new neural pathway into the brain. So the brain has held Nikki in this shape, sitting in this chair forever. This is how Nikki sits in the chair. Now, I don't know your story, so who knows? It's inside of you. You don't know your story. Remember, 95% under the water, 5% conscious. But we've all seen people that walk in stiff ways, sit funny, you know, got all kinds of things going on. Yeah. So when we start to shake, the neural pathways to the brain are getting a signal. Ah, she's releasing the charge of her tension that I had to hold in because of event X that locked at that moment. There it was. Do so you need to know what that event is? No. In fact, the chances of you knowing what that event are are very, very low. So I say 95% unconscious. Mm. Conscious ones would be things like whiplash. You'll notice that when people have car accidents, they have lupus. Now, what is that? In the moment before the impact, the body knows and it locks. Mm. I don't want to see what's coming at me. My jaw, my neck is all connected. And the impact goes into a stiff neck. And now yeah. I have whiplash. If you were a baby lying in the back of the car seat and it went, little ones, they get up and what's the problem? Yeah, Provided there are no other things, but yeah. they're not locked. But if you see it, if the chances are you're going to lock. You're going to lock before you hit the ground if you fall off something. It's the locking. Now that, that is an example of it happens unconsciously, so we locked. Yes. And then that is the thing that helped you survive. And if that is a physical survival thing, your body doesn't care about your thriving and how much you're living your life and the shoe wah realm. It mm -hmm. just wants you to stay alive. So now it stays locked in with a neural pathway into that pattern. In order when we start shaking, the neural pathways are going, ah, she's letting go from this trauma muscle from the psoas from this one that connects everything to everything oh she's letting it go okay we can let go the adrenals go oh we can stop pounding the adrenaline into her body so yeah. that she doesn't have to see everything as a drama and a fight response for every little thing that goes on boom 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 if you've been opiated in a freeze response it's going to actually wake your body up and no longer living like an internal zombie like a depressed depressed person all the time because mm. that was the mechanism helped you survive so we shake we let it go the neural pathways shift there's a place of change the next stimulus that comes along doesn't have the same old response over and over again it gets boring but so will it make a difference if I just come for one session of tremor release each body is absolutely unique so I say to people for me I have had people who have gone through phenomenal shifts in one session yeah. other people are, are not so um, allowing or perhaps not so uh, trusting yes. then they come for another session they do a little bit at home they're not sure their bodies don't want to shake because maybe mm, not sure about this and I always use the analogy of it's a bicycle with training wheels you get some kids I promise you those wheels are off in two seconds and they're down the road other kids it takes one wheel kind of my son rode like this for a long time <laughs> waiting for that one yeah, side. yeah on the one <laughs> side so your body is going to tell you and the body will release safely so there is the story of your life i don't know what your story is but when we shake we take one little chapter one skein of the ball of wool we release and we integrate this is the word from right. theory 
people walk around with this inner trauma and this inner tension because they haven't integrated. They've packed it away in a box under the bed. Whatever it is, the divorce, the loss of a parent, the abuse of childhood, I don't care what it is, it gets locked away. Why? So your body can survive. The body doesn't care. It yeah. just wants to get on with it. Yeah. It doesn't give you quality of life. Now we are going to take that out. It sounds scary, but we're not consciously taking it out. We take it out and we begin to allow it to release that locked in old charge and bring it back into the body safely without any drama. And you and do it that all through shaking, through tremor. Yeah. So it's a shaking and it's, a, it's, it's an integration. So after we shake, there is always rest. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll notice with every yoga class, they end in Shavasana, whatever we do, even in Nia today, we lay on the floor. The mm -hmm. body needs time. The neural pathways are shifting. It needs time to go, I need to integrate this experience gently. And if we just get up and go and do the same thing, well, the neural pathways just go, uh, I'm not safe, not safe. Mm -hmm. Let's just carry on with life the way we were. That feels safe. So the integration is literally just resting after you've done the exercise. Yeah. And sometimes we integrate during. If I see a client is going to what I call overwhelm, they're starting to shake really crazy. And trust me, the body can go. It can really, really go. Yeah. And it's shaking. Um, we've all seen our animals do it. We've seen dogs when they're supposedly dreaming. <laughs> the bodies are going absolutely crazy. Yes. Your body can go. Now, we do that in a safe, aware, conscious place while we're safe. And if I see that body's getting too excited, the heartbeat starts to go up, maybe sweaty palms, a little breathlessness, I ask the person to stop and just wait till everything comes down because we do not want to be building that charge too much. That charge when it builds too much takes the person to overwhelm. And overwhelm is how a lot of people are living right now. Yes. COVID has taken wherever they were at and just given them another 20% up on the charge. So you're living and at stress level instead of here. You're yes. living and you can 20% up. You can see it on the roads. You can see it in the shops, the impatience, the shortness with simple little things. The nervous systems are all on high alert, mm. high alert, mm. high alert. Every time, oh, I've got my mask, oh, I haven't got my mask, oh, sanitize, oh, it's just da, 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 adrenals. Mm. So depending on how well people have integrated this whole experience is how calm they'll be in the world about it or how very highly charged. So um, you could come for a tremor release exercises, just uh, you, you don't even have to have had anything bad happen to you. It's just actually getting your stress levels down. Yeah. And there is a continuum between tension and trauma. Right. The same thing happens with continual ongoing tension in people's lives. Just a normal job. It just starts to build your levels. Or a very high trauma, a suicide or a very severe death of somebody you love, etc. push you right up. Mm. So it can be a slow build. And one of the things we don't get in our society is that everybody pays huge attention to the slow build, I mean to the, to the big traumas, but yes. they don't pay attention to the slow build. And to the, the, the what I call the, the, the interesting ones, like things like having caesareans. You know, I've had people with me who didn't want caesareans, they wanted natural birth, but it was an elective season, and the doctor wanted to go on her. So there is a trauma around that birth because there's a disconnect from that mother and mm. there's postnatal depressions and there's all things. I'm not saying all caesareans are, it's just a scenario. Um, and so it's that kind of thing that we don't pay attention to because there's a happy baby at the end. Yeah. But there was a trauma. In fact, every birth is traumatic to the body yes. and to the mom. And there's always stuff going on around birth. Nobody just goes, hello, there's a baby. <laughs> um, and we forget this. Probably even for your fifth child, it's still there's still yes. some trauma going on. And then, 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 this little thing. I remember looking at my premature son, which was a trauma, which I never realized was a trauma. Six weeks preemie, in the incubator afterwards. Now I'm the all competent, all doing mum, always been competent in my life, didn't have a cooking clue what to do with this little thing. We were sickly and for the first time in my life I felt helpless and there's the word. The work of this theory is about any time the body feels helpless, mm -hmm. the body. Now your mind will tell you, yes I'll pass the exam, <laughs> but the body might just feel helpless in that moment. Yeah. Um, going for driver's test, simple things. Mm. And it could be just one thought that you had that made your body feel stressed and a little bit uh, stiff, and then you're like, no, I'm not going to, but it, then it's already locked in. No, it's just very, it's very, very unconscious. Mm. And what I love about this work is I don't need to know what it's about. So we don't go into a whole big trauma history. Mm. You're welcome to share it if you wish to. I've had people who want to share nothing. Mm. But the body, has such a relief and they see such incredible results and many people do not 
want to talk about their traumas. They've had enough of talking about it. It often recharges the body. Mm. Talking about it makes the body remember. And they sometimes say, every time I talk about it, I feel like I'm right in it. Yes, you are. Your body's taking you there. Yes, let's get rid of it. So let's talk about it. And why am I feeling this? Because your body's going, yes, we can release it. But there's no mechanism. Mm. And, um, you know, with this whole tension, trauma, stress, Deepak Chopra always says it's lack of control, lack of predictability. You can usually don't see it coming. Yeah. And lack of outlet for frustration. And for me, this is an outlet. Yes. And it's such a simple thing. I've had six-year-olds and 86-year-olds. Anybody can do it at their pace, their way, privately in their own bedroom, don't need to be watched by anybody, just need one thing, self-regulation. Yeah. Because as I said, if you let that body keep going and you go to overwhelm and the next thing you're bawling your eyes out and screaming and ranting, it's not helpful. That's yeah. a pattern we know. Yeah. If that's your pattern, to rant, rave, scream, cry, whatever, or if you just go into a little ball in the corner and, and hide under the blankets, not helpful, that's overwhelm, too mm. much. Mm. So we learn how to release and wait release and wait safely self-regulation so the next time the mother-in-law comes along and she happens to be one of the triggers perhaps it's like right that's just mom-in-law being mom-in-law i think i'll go and have a glass of water <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't take us yeah to some release the yeah. pattern exactly release the hamster wheel yeah the repeated pattern which is your body just trying to release the charge over and over again and when we release it safely in a happy little environment, shaking, the neural pathways shift and the body goes, ah, we can find another way to survive rather than this. Yeah, it's just oh, makes we all want happier that. life, <laughs> calmer, yeah. happier people report sleeping, um, people who've had high end traumas. I mean, I won't reveal any names or details, but a woman who had been abused from the age of four. Um, had not slept into her 40s because the abuse happened at night. One session, she slept that night for the first time, and I'm not making this up, it's in my files at home. Wow. Um, so depending on the story, the body, and the willingness, and where they're at, this person was really ready to move. She'd done a lot of work up to this point. Mm. The only thing that hadn't come along, she'd done so much therapy, so many courses, the only thing that hadn't come along was Release the body. Release it out of the body. The body. Her mind, her spirit, her soul, her emotions, they were all there just the body she'd forgiven she'd moved on mm. her body refused because why it said you're not safe at night i'm sorry you're just not safe in your 40s so wow. finally she felt safe at night to sleep simple act yeah that's a beautiful story mm. and i'm sure there's many people that could use a little bit of moving shifting some tremor tra uh, trauma out of the body with tremor yeah <laughs> shift yeah. the trauma to the tremor yeah <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much mm. for explaining that Pleasure. and um, giving that knowledge. Um, is there anything else you'd like to, to share or add before, before we close? No, I think I'd just like to say that particularly at this time that um, we are all needing to learn to self-regulate because a lot of the mechanisms we learned or used are not available anymore. So to self-regulate, to see when my stress is getting to a point that I can't manage, I have a little tool that I can lie on the floor and shake it out safely and integrate it. We also work with the breath. So just to maybe to say to people, the in-breath activates us. We have to go and do something to breathe in. The long out-breath takes us into rest and digest. So if nothing else, just taking soft breaths and long, long breaths, at particular time of masking, we're forgetting to breathe out, and that is not calming the body. The mm -hmm. nervous system needs that, and we do a lot of that when we shake too. Long out breaths for the body. Just rest and digest. So yes, and trust this beautiful instrument, self-healing. We know how to do it. We've yeah. all been born in these bodies. We will all depart in these bodies, and they know everything. 50 trillion cells have ears. They know everything about us. So we can. Um, thank you for helping to remember for this little part. Thank <laughs> you. Yes, and thank you for taking the time to ask me all these beautiful questions and to share with me. I love it. <laughs> it was my absolute pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the NixiePod podcast. Please do subscribe. <laughs>